This is Sean Irwin, your youth director with Darts Ontario, and welcome to episode 26 of Darts Ontario Let's Talk Darts. I wanted to talk to our youth players from past and present to see how they got into darts and their story to help inspire the youth dart players of today. Thank you to our sponsor, SSS Canada, for all the support in the Darts Ontario organization. Go to their Facebook page to see the high quality custom dart shirts, which you can order for your team or individually. Today, I'm with Jamie Ellis, formerly of the Waterford Youth Dart League. Thank you, Jamie, for coming on to do one of our episodes here on Darts Ontario Let's Talk Darts. So how are you doing today? Not too bad. You? I'm doing great. So thank you so much for doing this. And uh, as we try to inspire the youth of today to keep up the darts and to show them what it takes to be on the team and to have fun and enjoy it. So tell me, how did you get started playing darts and how old were you? Uh, I played a little bit when I was seven, uh, just for fun in the basement when I lived in Brantford for a while there. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. The board kind of disappeared after a while for some reason. I'm not sure why. And then when I moved to Waterford, uh, my buddy Aaron Moss used to, uh, play out of that league for years and, and uh, he got me interested. I always loved the idea of playing darts. Didn't know there was leagues then. So yeah, I, uh, ended up joining and. It so, was a good time. So was it Aaron that actually got you to start playing competitively? Uh, it was more, yeah, he got me into the youth league. Uh, it was more me pushing myself. I really didn't have any backing as far as uh, anybody in my family being a dart player or anything. It was just me taking an interest more than anything. Sounds like myself. Uh, it was just me playing darts and my dad got into just, you know, playing darts in the basement with me and he played a couple adult youth tournaments with me. So that was great. So tell us about your experience playing in Waterford Youth Dart League and where is Waterford? Waterford is a short drive from Simcoe, Ontario uh, or Dover, that area, not <laughs> up north. Yeah. Uh, no, it was it was a good experience. It was it was a really good time in darts. It was for a youth, you couldn't ask for anything better, in my opinion. It was, you know, we had a lot of, of good clubs back then, and it seemed like every month we were having tournaments. Uh, whether it be Brantford, Paris would throw tournaments. Uh, sometimes you'd have one to two tournaments a month, and you'd go there. I remember Brantford; they had the best tournaments. They, were, a lot of people, they'd have it table laid out and it'd be covered in trophies and for every division and you know it was exciting it was the rooms were full so Brantford Brantford's had a lot of great youth dart players over the years for sure yeah so how often did you practice darts as a youth uh, during the season and did you ever practice during the off season oh yeah yeah I was uh a little addicted I guess you could say I uh there wasn't a time I wasn't practicing. I, uh, I made it a habit, minimum an hour a day, uh, average, probably about four hours. And then at one point it was uh, pretty crazy. I'd play seven days a week if I could. I was always finding tournaments locally that, I, or I'd play even in the NDFC from mid to late uh, teens. So there wasn't, if there was a tournament, I was there. <laughs> Did you play any uh, adult tournaments uh, or adult leagues when you were a youth? I did. I did get kicked out of one. It was kind of funny. Uh, I, I was doing really well. I uh, hadn't lost a game. I was in a B division. But I had already been used to it because I used to go to Sw Swanee's, it was called, in Waterford there at the time, every Friday and play with a lot of the A division players and in the men's league. So, it, yeah, there was – I did well. I got booted out of one and I – you know, you took it like it was and got back into it the next year. So it was all right. And uh, now more and more that I see the adult leagues are letting some of the youth players play and uh, very competitively for the youth players as well. Yeah. No, good, good for helping youth grow for sure. Yeah. It definitely helped my game a lot. So, <laughs> so when you practice four or five hours a day, um, practicing is never as fun as a real game, but how did you make practicing fun? Goals. You got to set goals. If you don't have a goal in mind, you're, you're not going to get to that next level. You're, you're always going to stay where you are, in my opinion. Um, so for me, it was, my goal was 18 darts or less. If I wasn't throwing an 18 or less, you know, I, I wasn't happy with my game. I wanted to get it better. I always wanted to improve. So for me, I would start out 
practicing 170. Uh, try to work on doubles. That was the focus there. Then I would uh, go to uh, cricket, practice some triples. And I remember reading an article years ago in the Bullseye News. Uh, Stacy Bromberg posted it in there. And it was a good way to play cricket. And it was focusing on your 20s first, then your 19s, you take them in order and you hit as many as you can of each one and you keep points. And at the end of it, you calculate how many you hit. So you have a target, you have a goal there. And I, I remember like she was saying something like 27 was considered really good. So that was my focus. What do you get? How do you get to 27, right? So I preferably there, I didn't want to be under 20. So minimum under nothing under 20 maximum as high as I could possibly yeah. get it. And if I hit something high, so if I got that 27, I wanted to beat 27. So it was always challenging, right? So even when I played 501 would be my next practice game, I would practice 501. And I would keep track of my high scores, my 180s for that practice session. And I'm always trying to beat my best game. So I would circle my best game on my chalkboard and I'd always try to beat it. So if I hit an 18, I wanted to beat it. I want to get 16, 14, 13. And I was always challenging that way. So it was, it's just set a goal. <laughs> That's the most important part is setting the goals. And, you know, if you're not practicing, you're going to plateau and you're going to go downhill a bit. You always got it. Even if you're on top of the world, you're still going to have to practice to keep that position. Oh, yeah. So how did you prepare yourself before a big match, getting yourself focused? Uh, you know, it was always the same routine for me. I uh, wake up in the morning, get breakfast. Obviously, you got to eat and uh one of the things I used to do is just turn the radio on, get some music going, get the, the momentum going, get woke up. And uh, yeah, yeah, as soon as I get into a venue, it's right to a board and I'm practicing. I'm just focusing 170s, maybe practice just throwing some triples. But and anybody who knew me back as a youth and stuff, I, I never left the board. I was always practicing. I finish a game, I go practice if I could. So it's, uh, yeah. Just mainly just stay focused and keep practicing even at the venue uh, we know darts is a very emotional game and uh, how did you control your emotions while you're standing on the line your opponent shoots a big a big score and you got to control those emotions <laughs> i'm a different breed younger years it was tough <laughs> it, it was trying to figure it out and honestly i think the best way to learn to control your emotions and i try to tell kids this all the time go play tournaments Tournaments are key. Tournaments are all the ones that challenge you them for your emotions. If you can hold your emotions in tournaments, a lot of it's nerves. And when you get used to playing in those atmospheres, those nerves melt away eventually. And you're able to just push along and do well, right? So yeah, Definitely, uh, definitely good advice. And what's the best part of competing for you? And what's the most important thing about the game of darts? Uh, the best part of competing... Uh, for me would be the challenge. I love the challenge. I like picking the best people out there and I like going up against them. I like getting knocked down and getting back up and just keep pushing along until I beat them. And then you feel good about it and just getting that good game, those good games going. Now, after a good performance and the match is over, what's the one thing you like to do? What's the one thing I like to do? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, what? a lot of the time I, again I go to a board and I just think about things that that uh maybe didn't go well and I may spend 5 10 15 maybe an hour and just focus on trying to see if I could fix some of them things there I don't know it's just practice <laughs> and during a round robin we know we don't always win all our games but uh you don't have time to go you know um go to another board for 5 10 minutes how do you stay focused on that next match after maybe a, a tough loss? Uh, you know, I just talk to people, stay loose. Like some others have said, it's, you know, maybe watch some of the games, just focus, see what people are doing and maybe try to learn, improve your game. Everybody's got something to teach you. So, yeah. 
Now, the Darts Ontario website only goes back so far. Um, we have all the results of, you know, Team Ontario, things like that. But the players that never made the team, there's a, a real bad, there's a connection of missing pieces there. Oh, so yeah. I wasn't able to find out your success uh, in darts through the provincials in the zone. So tell us about some of your greatest success and memories in youth darts. Uh, some of my greatest in youth. Mine weren't so many in youth. Mine were later when I, like, playing youth but playing more the adults I've had a lot of success and we used to have weekend blind draws with the adults we'd have I don't know 22 teams and some of them and I I used to do really well in them and I used to make quite a bit of money playing them which was funny but uh no I used to like them as far as the youth you know I, I guess my final year top eight to 16 in Ontario bracket uh it was a little disappointing, uh, a little bittersweet at the same time. I, uh, I was driven that year. I was playing really well. Uh, I remember the guy that made it to stage with Steve Warnock, Luke, he, uh, he was in my division. I left him 300 points behind both games. I played him. So when I got into the top eight, 16, I was there, I had it and it was just, it wasn't nerves. It was just, I don't know. It was unlucky, unfortunate event where I just couldn't hit the double at the time. And the player is up against uh, Bullseye Double 16, and kudos to him. Really well played and knocked me out. But the, the bittersweet part was I had been sponsored. So there was a, something on the back burner there. I ended up going to the Golden Harvest. And I got to play with a lot of the pros. And it, it was a lot of fun. I got to play Eric Bristow first match, second day. Uh, Peter Manley uh, the first day. So chalk a few good games with uh, Dennis Priestley and stuff. So it was, that was probably a highlight for me. That, that would be a huge highlight. Uh, one big highlight for myself. It's not just playing darts. It's actually working at the world cup of darts in 1989 and getting to meet these top players from around the world. And uh, it was a great, great experience uh, selling all the merchandise at that event. Yeah. It's pretty amazing to meet them. They're neat. <laughs> yeah. So moving into the adult program, tell us about the transition from youth to adults. For me, there was very little transition. I, I like I said, I, from oh, 16 on, I, uh, I was driven. I wanted to play everything. So I played a lot of adult and actually it, it boosted my game huge. So I was already there. Uh, but if I had to say for, for most people when it, leaving youth, going into adult, it, it can be an eye opener. If you're not used to the level, I mean, youth is one thing, adults another, you do see um, some really tough competition out there. Like even in this area alone, if I think of it now, like you're looking at adult, you have Steve Warnock, Bruce Davey, you have uh, Darcy Trenholm, Ty Godden. There's, there's a lot of talent just here alone. And when you get up against these guys, they really push you to play. So it can be, it can be a challenge. <laughs> and that helps improve your game as well. Playing players that are so good like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> so, so what are your goals for the new season and how will you work towards those new seat? Uh, those goals um, as a dart player. So for me, I've, it's been challenging for me the last couple of few years. Uh, I got into the youth. I got busy. Uh, I got injured. <laughs> so I put the darts down for the last couple of few years. This will be the first year trying to get a game going. So it's just getting back in form, finding, like I said before, I want my 18 or better. So it's just trying to find the consistency and, and playing again. So. Well, hopefully uh, we, uh, you know, COVID goes away and we can all get back to playing darts and having fun. So. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of good online stuff too. So. There is. We're going to talk about that in a few moments here, but uh in the game of darts, you really have to become an expert while you're standing on that line uh, to help really improve your game. What advice can you give or how did you learn to be so good at math? At math, it was, you know, just the basics, learning the patterns through my youth group back in the day. It was, you know, learning to chalk. We would do it right to left, right? And just adding by tens, twenties to start and then adding your, your like your highest and your and then your lowest numbers is what I try to teach a lot of youth in our league. Um, and part of it was as far as outs go, I was fortunate. Like I said, I got into the adult. I met an awesome guy named Kerry Gates uh, from Port Rowan. And, uh, you know, I was playing one of the tournaments one day and I'll never forget it. He sat me down. He goes, 
you don't know your outs. And I said, what? And he said, you don't know your finishes. And I said, no, I've never, never really worked on them. I usually use the card and he knew that. And so the best lesson I ever got from him was always think of a two dart finish. And that was one of the best ways to learn the math along with 170 coming down on finishes. But he, uh, he was influential, walked me through a bunch of them and I caught on from there. So it was, you need to know your finishes. You know, we have our out cards and that's a great, um, you know, start. But as we get better and better, we start learning that there's other ways to take those uh, outs out for sure. Yeah. So last season, Lisa and you took over the Niagara Youth Dart League. How yeah. long have you been involved with the Youth League and how was the experience watching all your youth do so well at the 2020 <laughs> Provincials as three of you, your players made Team Ontario? Yeah, no, it was a shock. And uh um, it was a, it was an interesting first year with a lot of lessons learned. Uh, I had been helping with Debbie a little bit since Hannah was seven. She's 14 now. So, um, yeah, it's, I kind of had some experience there. Did it fully prepare me? Probably not. It's when you take it on yourself, there's a lot of learning. Uh, there's a lot to be learned just by watching what other people do, taking from other resources. So, and, and going back to uh, what I learned when I was younger, like as far as the competition, like trying to find a drive, that's the tough part. What drives these kids? And, and, and there was one thing I had always wanted. We finally kind of got it implemented and that was having a point system. You know, they need a driver. They need something that says, I need to come out. If I don't come out, I'm, you know, I'm gonna lose points or, you know, back in, in my youth day, it was the tournaments, having the trophies, seeing the trophies. You wanted to win, right? It, there was always a driver back then. So for that, it was, it was a challenge that way, getting things coordinated. But as far as doing well, you know, and I know a lot of people recognize the top three, but we had a lot of even kids that did better than they've ever done before and they made it to the second day and I, they surprised themselves and that was that was good to see uh so you know it was overwhelming it was shocking it was it was a big surprise i think for many of us and and good for them for putting the effort in and, and doing well and hopefully you know they set new goals next year and or this year if we get to play and and, and maybe they can do better <laughs> Well, I'm always really proud of the kids. Um, they do so well at the uh, provincials and this great sportsmanship and your team did an incredible job. They were just uh, great to see on stage. They did really good. I was really hoping to take those three to nationals with the rest of the kids. Yeah, it was disappointing. It was, uh, I mean, it's bittersweet too, right? They, for the ones that made the stage, they got their Stanley Cup basically. Yeah, yeah I agree. It would have been nice to see. I, I kind of feel bad for them that way, but it is what it is, right? Well, you mentioned your daughter, so let's talk about your uh, favorite dart player, Hannah. <laughs> she plays in the league, and uh, she did so well this year. She made top eight in Ontario. Um, yeah, which is funny, because I thought it was the top 16, and you uh, corrected me on that, and she kind of gave me the uh, the look afterwards, which was uh -oh. kind of you taunted me about it, but yeah. Yeah, she was that close to, uh, you know, making it to the next round, but, you know, she did amazing, and, you know, set your goals, and what do you want to do next year? I'm sure she wants to go a little farther. Yeah. Yeah. No, she, uh, actually she made a goal this year and, and it was the first time to be honest, she had ever set a goal for herself and that was practice at least one day a week. And, uh, it was something as simple as that, that and learning her math a little more. She's always kind of struggled. She still calculates a bit. She's getting better and better every year, but yeah, it was just something as simple as practicing. Well, I imagine you got her in a darts and how old was she when she started and how was that watching her compete and doing so well this year? Hey. Uh, she was seven when she started. Uh, and, you know, it was fun. She was tiny. Uh, she did really well, actually, her first year in uh, Tyke uh, for the, the zone shoot. She uh, finished, I think that was the year she finished in top two. And I was really surprised. She was surprised we were surprised she was hitting doubles. <laughs> so, uh, as for this year, uh, um, yeah, I, I don't know. She, uh, she's excited to play in the online league. Uh, and, uh, you know, 
provincials she did well it was exciting to watch her uh I didn't get to watch her as much because like you said I was taking on the role of watching everybody else and making sure everybody was at their boards and everything else so when I came I actually came in to see the round robin before the knockout and I caught her last game. She lost it, but she had enough points. She made it into the round robin. So I got to watch her play Snowly. She played Snowly really well. And uh, Snowly was awesome with her. Said she told her she threw really well. So she was really excited. It was the first year she grew a lot. It was the first year she she didn't get upset, which was nice to see. She takes it hard. She, she has a hard time uh accepting defeat sometimes so that's a battle for her but she she took it really well she smiled I probably took it worse I was kind of like oh no (laughs) but you know you always want to see your kid do well and but you know what the goal was that we talked about going into this she had never made second day and the goal was second day let's hit second day and go from there and she exceeded it and I, I tell her that to this day kudos to her you went you met it and you exceeded your goal and you know, maybe next year you'll do better. Yep. So, so now she just set the bar a little higher. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So, so with running a league, what's the most important part of the game you instill into the youth of today? Learn your math, learn your math, learn your outs, uh, you know, keep your sportsmanship, you know, you're going to lose a lot of games. You, you basically got to learn to lose well. Right. Except defeat. It happens. Um, grow from it, like figure out what you're doing wrong, learn from, from your mistakes. Right. So a lot of time in our league, a lot of the stronger players, you know, I don't focus on them as much. There are a lot of them know their outs very well. They're they're To me, they're kind of like miniature coaches. Like Braden's great for that. We've talked about Braden before. Braden, Braden likes to teach, uh, kids some finishes likes to work on their math with them a bit and so a lot of time he'll work with some that are are a little more advanced but still need to to be fine-tuned on their outs while I focus more on the kids that are struggling with math Uh, I'll try to get their math in check try to get maybe them working on thinking about their finishes a bit and it paid off this year paid off big time it uh I, I favor the underdog. I love the underdog. I, I like to really work with, with kids that maybe don't believe in themselves and try to get that out of them, get them to, to understand they can do it. Right. So it's, it's good to work with them. We, we got to tr- always try to, you know, let those, the youth know that when you're playing somebody like Braden Hall, don't worry, just take it as a lesson and do your best and learn from him. He's yeah. an incredible player and he's going to help you grow. Absolutely. So due to COVID, the season is put on hold, but you took the initiative to run an online league, a youth league, actually. Tell us about how you came up with the idea and the support you have for it. How I came up with the idea was, uh, I I think some of the kids wanted it. I had a couple parents wanted it. Um, And we saw us, you know, uh, Justin Juice Ryan had thrown a couple, um, excuse me, There was a couple other kids, or sorry, a couple other tournaments throughout the uh, summer, and they were going off well. So I know Braden and Trey were involved in a few, Emma. So I I had talked to Braden, I had talked to Trey, because I was more webcam darts based. I had experience with that, I had done that. There were more dart connect and running it more like the turn, like they knew how the tournaments ran. So we... We talked to them. We decided to go with that with consistency and just we wanted to keep everybody active if we could. Um, it was kind of unfortunate. We didn't get as many as we had hoped. Uh, there's, It's still not something that's grown on a lot of people uh, as far as the kids go. Uh, so we reached out. We got a few more from other groups. And I, I guess the idea there is we're hoping that, you know, they can form their relationships we see at provincials and maybe help each other grow as players and and have fun in the same time. So well, I really appreciate you doing that uh, as a youth director. Uh, we're all busy in life and it's hard to, you know, to do other things as well, but uh, really appreciate you doing that. Thank you. So let's go back to you. So who are some of your biggest supporters as you competed as a youth player? Uh, like I said, Kerry Gates, hands down, probably was just helping me with my outs was the biggest thing. Uh, 
Bill Grant, check, he had check out Dart Supplies. He's from Kitchener area back in the day. He's the one who sponsored me and, and really drove me by sending me to the Golden Harvest Cup in Saskatchewan. Uh, you know, my friends, my friends really boosted me with building my confidence a bit. My dart partner, Mike O'Neill, he would travel with me to all the NDFCs. Aaron Johnson would travel with me. You spoke to him a couple episodes ago. Yeah. We used to get together all the time. Sometimes we'd play over the phone. Uh, but yeah, we used to play all the time. We were constantly, you know, uh, you know, the whole Waterford Dart team, the leadership there, you know, if it wasn't for them, who knows, right? I may not even be in Dart. So, you know, I have a lot of thankful. So I can hear those stories. Really yeah. Yeah. So did you play any other sports uh, as a youth? Uh, yeah, I played a little bit of baseball. Uh, aside from that, I love my fishing. <laughs> so obviously not. I did a couple tournaments, but uh, to be honest, I prefer not to because <laughs> it's just more enjoyable. It's more relaxing. Well, that and, was the next yeah. question. Uh, what about today? What other hobbies do you have besides darts or sports? Uh, I'm getting back into scuba diving. So when I had my daughter, I took a break. I used to do 30 dives a year. Uh, so I got back into scuba diving. Uh, didn't get many this year. I probably got four to six uh, dives in, but I got the addition of my daughter. So here we go again. It's her first year of diving and we had a great time. That's great to hear. So I'm sure I'm going to guess your favorite dart opponent is your daughter. We're going to say that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> if, if there's one player in the world that you'd love to play, who would that be? But I see you played some amazing players like Eric Bristow. I remember seeing him in 1989, just a great player. Yeah, and it was good to play him in a, a tournament atmosphere. So it was a, a match that counted, right? So it was it was for a big event. So that was exciting because now you, I got his true darts out of him. So that was, yeah. that was a thing. Did, did, but, you take, uh, did you take a leg out of, off him? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I did well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he was one of the only pros, unfortunately, that I did. Uh, had a hard time with Peter Manley. He was throwing lights out, but... It was a great, great experience either way. Good for you. So, but yeah, if I could, you know, if I could play anybody today, it'd probably be Chizzy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's, uh, he's become my, the one guy I kind of really like. He's, like I said, I favor the underdog. He's, I mean, he's done well, kudos to him, but he's that guy that's almost there, but just misses it. <laughs> so, but he's got amazing dart skill. So. So are you playing in any leagues right now or would you be playing if it wasn't for COVID? I'm not playing in a league right now. Like I said, I'm just getting back. It's getting back to a practice routine again and really working with my daughter right now. But if I, if I was able to play a league, yeah, it was set up that I was to rejoin one of my old leagues. So. So as we wrap this up, one more question. Uh, any advice you can give to the youth to follow your success of how well you've done over the years and uh, you know to help follow the footsteps? You know, I, the main... I guess basically the conclusion I can give is basically a lot of just echoing what I've said, practice, set targets, set goals, um, you know, learn your, your math, learn your outs, those play tournaments, get the exposure uh, and, you know, be a good sport. Um, You're going to lose, take those losses and enjoy the losses. Like, you know, I, I know nobody likes to lose every, the goal is to win obviously, but you know, Focus more on the good games than the bad. If you're playing a good game and you lose, it's better than playing a bad game and winning. So I always say you don't need to look in the rear view mirror. That's the past. Nothing you can do. So yeah, absolutely. So great advice, Jamie. And thank you so much for doing this. And uh, hopefully uh, you reach your goals, whatever they might be. And uh, we'll yeah. see you at some tournaments, hopefully, and uh, the provincial next year. For sure. Thank you. Thank you. You have a great day. All right. You too. That was great talking to Jamie Ellis of the Niagara Youth Dart League. Uh, he's doing a great job after one year as uh, three of his team actually made Team Ontario. So, so now make sure you go to our website at www.dartsontario.ca to find out more information about our organization. Go to our Facebook page and hit like so you get all the recent updates. Are you a current or former youth player in the Darts Ontario program? Would you like to be on one of our episodes? You can email me at youth at dartsontario.com. This is Sean Irwin, your Darts Ontario Youth Director, and make sure you check out our next interview on episode 27 of Darts Ontario Let's Talk Darts. Thank you for watching and see you next time.